So you're thinking about moving to Bellingham, Washington, and you find yourself wondering about one of the most important components of life in a new place, the weather. Well, you may have heard some things, maybe good, maybe bad, maybe somewhere in between. In this video, we're gonna break down all four seasons of weather in Bellingham, Washington. And if you stick around to the end, I'll share some examples of the extreme weather that we've experienced here over the last couple of years. We're gonna get started right now. All right, so diving right in, talking about the weather, we will start at the, I guess, end and or beginning of the year. We're talking about winter. So this is gonna run from December through February. Now here in the area, you can reasonably expect that your average temperatures are going to be in the mid 40s for your highs and your mid 30s for your lows. Now, of course, there are times when we have higher highs and we have lower lows. And again, we'll get into talking about some of those extreme events that we've experienced over the last few years towards the tail end of the video. But during these months of the year, you can reasonably expect somewhere between four and five inches of rain per month. We are going to have a number of cloudy, overcast gray days, but we do get some occasional sun breaks, which during the winter season are breath of fresh air. You can expect for the sun to come up around 7.55 a.m. and to go down around 4.15 p.m. Now get about eight hours of daylight. We maximize this by participating in daylight savings time, which this year I believe will happen on November the 3rd. So the overarching theme over the course of the winter months is yes, you're gonna have some colder days. Yes, you're gonna have some gray skies. And yes, you are going to have some accumulation of rain and occasionally snow. Talking briefly about snow, I would share that on average, we see roughly 10 inches of snow per winter season. And this typically comes in the form of two or three separate snow events that cause that total accumulation of 10 inches. Now, again, sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more, but I would say on average, we get about three events between December and uh, February. Occasionally snow will run into March, uh, but you're typically gonna see anywhere from, you know, maybe two to four inches per event sometimes more, but in the grand scheme of things, relatively mild. The snow will typically last for a handful of days. The temperatures will then warm up. It will melt and we're back to business as usual. All right, from there we head into spring, which is of course the months of March through May. Now we are gonna see a greater variance in terms of temperature, in terms of daylight, because we are in what I would refer to as a bit of a shoulder season where we transition out of winter into spring, moving towards summer. And there tends to be a lot more variance as you're likely familiar with wherever you live during this particular season. So temperatures on the high end are going to range from the low 50s up to the mid 60s. And for your low temperatures, they're going to range typically between 37 and 45 degrees. Now, as I shared moments ago, we do occasionally get some snow events that run into the month of March. Typically, those are early March, maybe even mid March. And so we can have some colder temperatures at the start of spring. Our rainfall decreases just a bit from winter. You can reasonably expect about two and a half to three and a half inches of rain on a per month basis during this period of time. And our daylight gets significantly longer. We start out in March with about 11 hours a day light going all the way up to 15 and a half hours by the time we reach May. The sun will begin to rise uh, as early as about 5.15 in the morning in the month of May. So you can start your day much earlier, wake up feeling a little bit more energized, having a little bit more motivation to get out of bed. But the spring season brings a circumstance in which you're gonna wanna dress in layers because you may leave the house under certain conditions and find those to be dramatically different in the afternoon. A great example is waking up, uh, you know, in the high 30s, low 40s, little bit of a drizzle, fast forward to the afternoon, we might even crest into the 60s and that uh, cold weather gear that you left the house in is not going to serve you well, uh, particularly if you're outside. So pro tip uh, for the spring and particularly the fall months when you're here in the Pacific Northwest, definitely dress in layers. From here, we move into what is my favorite season here in the Pacific Northwest, which is summer. Now, summer, of course, runs the months of June to August, where we're gonna see average temperatures run between 70 and 78 degrees. Again, with a little bit of a progression in terms of, of temperatures as we move through the season. Lows during this time of year are gonna range typically between 50 and 55 degrees. I've mentioned this in other videos. You might go camping even in the heat of the summer, even in the month of August, and you might see temperatures fall below 50, even some odd 40 
five, six, seven, eight degrees, uh, particularly if you're up in the mountains, even in the summer months. So, you know, you want to plan accordingly, you want to dress accordingly, you want to pack accordingly for those types of events. Now, average rainfall this time of year, we drop all the way down to an average of three to four inches for the entire summer season. So this can mean that, you know, typically you'll see a little bit of rain in June, whereas July and August may have a couple days of rain, may have zero days of rain. Going back a couple years, we went all the way from July well into September. September without any significant rain accumulation whatsoever. This is the time of year when our days are the longest. We're going to get somewhere in the ballpark of 16 hours of daylight. The sun's coming up uh, just after five o'clock in the morning and going down as late as 9 30 p.m. So we get these phenomenally long, beautiful, sunny, mild, but warm temperature days. And again, uh, why it's my favorite season of the year. This brings us, of course, to fall, which is going to run the months of September to November. Now in early fall, we're still going to get those 65 plus degree days. Uh, on the high end, we're going to start to get down uh, below the 40s. And as we reach, you know, the November months, this is where we're going to return to those low 40s, high 30s and going back to even, you know, comparable temperatures to where we started with the winter months in the very beginning of the video. We are going to see precipitation pick up again and we're going to average back out to something like four to five inches of rain per month during this season of the year. Our days do get a bit shorter uh, with 13 some odd hours of daylight in September going all the way down to that eight and a half hours per day as we're almost transitioned into winter. Realistically, you can expect the sun to come up around 7.45 a.m. and to set around 4.30 p.m. as we're getting into the later months. Uh, it's still a phenomenal time of the year. We still get some great days with great sun, great warm temps. But again, this is another season much like spring where you may want to dress in layers and you may want to plan a accordingly because the weather that you wake up to may not be the weather that you're presented with by later in the afternoon. All right, so a couple of quick tips and tricks before we dive into talking about some of these extreme weather events. So number one is you just want to be prepared for this weather. If you're coming from someplace where the sun is out significantly more and the rain is present significantly less, then you're probably going to need to enhance your wardrobe with some rain gear. We just continue to live life here in the Pacific Northwest, regardless of what's going on uh, in terms of precipitation. That includes, you know, the walk from your car to the office. That includes going for a hike, a bike ride, a run. That includes taking the kids out for their soccer game on Saturdays. There's a joke here in the area that if you see someone with an umbrella, that they're probably a tourist because we really just tend to embrace the rain and continue to live our lives without much regard for it. Another thing that I occasionally see, you know, comments on my videos when I'm talking about the weather are the experience that people have with what is known as seasonal affective disorder. Now this is, you know, the short days, the gray skies, the lack of sunlight that people say can have a, you know, mental, emotional, psychological impact on their well-being and on their state of mind. So there are uh, therapy lights that replicate sunlight, red light, what have you, that you can find all over Amazon. A lot of people use those effectively. Another thing that people do is supplement with vitamin D, something that we generally get from the sun, but when the sun is not present, it's of course not being absorbed by our body. So you just want to plan ahead for these things. One of the big things I always encourage people to do, especially if they're new to the area, is to plan a warm weather vacation during the fall or winter months. There's a lot of times when summer rolls around, kids get out of school and we'll have friends tell us they're going to Hawaii, they're going to Florida, they're going to Costa Rica, Mexico, and that's awesome. But for me uh, and my preference is, again, summer is really arguably the best time of year to be here in the Pacific Northwest and I would rather take that trip when the days are short, the skies are gray, so on and so forth. So if you can budget for a warm weather vacation during the winter months, that's definitely something that's gonna help tide you over until the sun comes out more significantly and more routinely here in Bellingham. Hey, if this is your first time on the channel, we encourage you to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you can keep up on all the content that we're releasing about Bellingham, Whatcom County, and all the great things that are going on here in this area. My name is Jeff Engen. I'm with MJB Real Estate Group, and every day we get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you considering a move to this area, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're thinking about moving tomorrow, 10 months from now, or sometime in between, you can find all of our contact information below. We would love to be of help to you in any way that we can, and we encourage you to reach out. I also want to share with you that we have a brand new relocation guide. It is completely free to help you better understand 
Bellingham, the surrounding area, and if it might be the right spot for you. But for now, let's get back to talking about the weather here in Bellingham. All right, so as promised, we are gonna spend just a moment talking about some of the more extreme weather events that have happened here in Bellingham, the surrounding areas over the last few years. But one of the common themes that I hear from people is they're considering a move to the area, especially if they're coming from an area like the Southeast, if they're coming from someplace like Colorado, if they're coming from California, uh, Arizona, Nevada, is that they're excited about the mild climate here in the Pacific Northwest. And again, just as we've gone through talking about the temperatures throughout the season, in the grand scheme of things, uh, yes, it is very mild here year round. We don't get these high temperatures into the hundreds that uh, are routinely experienced in some place like Arizona. We don't deal with hurricane season down in Florida and the rest of the Southeast, uh, but we do occasionally get some more extreme weather events. So the first one that I wanted to share, back in February of 2019, the dates were February 8th through February 11th, and we had a major snowstorm that came through and dumped more than two feet of snow through much of Whatcom County. Most parts of Bellingham saw between 12 and 18 inches, um, but there was significant accumulation exceeding two feet in many parts of the country. Now, the result of this was long-term school closures. There were power outages. The roads in many areas were impassable. And Bellingham is not really accustomed to that uh, caliber of a snow event. So it took more time for the city to get out and clear roads, um, plow, and get us back in business than if we were to just have a snow event that was a couple, two, three inches. So from a winter perspective, it is possible that we would see a more significant snow event, such as the one that was back in 2019. Going back a few years prior to that event in 2019, there was a significant windstorm that came through Whatcom County March 10th of 2016. Now during this windstorm, we saw gusts of wind that were between 60 and 70 miles per hour. This again caused a lot of power outages, caused a lot of property damage. Uh, and impacted the region quite a bit. Now, you know, as you've uh, likely seen, if you've been here in person or if you've, you know, just experienced the Pacific Northwest from a distance, we have trees everywhere. They're beautiful, they're green, it's phenomenal, but uh, our trees are not accustomed to those types of winds. And so when an event like that happens, uh, it will shut down not only, uh, you know, the power grid to a certain capacity, but it will impact roads, again, making things impassable and necessitating a good amount of time for crews to get out and to not only restore power, but also clear the road from trees and other fallen debris. Fast forward to summer, there was a high temperature event that happened back in June of 2021. So it was June 26th to June 28th. It was quite early in the season for an event like this to happen. But Bellingham, I believe for the first time ever, reached triple digit temperatures. We ran at about 99 degrees there for those couple of days. We crested up over 100 degrees. 101, 103, 104 in some parts of the county. Again, this was an extreme event. This is a record temperature, uh, particularly for this season of the year, but it did cause a lot of impact here to community members because air conditioning is something that growing up in this area has always been optional. Uh, since that event, a lot more people have decided now's the time to go ahead and install that. But there were many people for that duration of time that did not have AC in their house. If they did, maybe it was just a window unit, but that was a high temperature event, June of 2021. Now, as I went back in the history books, I really didn't find a remarkable weather event that it happened in the fall here in uh, the Bellingham area. There have been early snow events where temperatures have gotten low and there's been snow accumulation in October, but that uh, type of event is few and far between and typically it's followed by a significant increase in temperatures. The snow melts, it disappears. It was maybe a one some odd two day interruption. One more extreme event that I did want to share with you, you may have even heard of, is the flooding that happened back in November of 2021. So November 14th and 15th, we saw an atmospheric river come through Whatcom County. It dumped about as much rain in a two to three day period of time as we are accustomed to seeing for the entire month of November here in the area. And so the, the homes and the areas that were the most impacted here within the county are up in the northeast portion of the county. This is going to be the Nooksack, Sumas, and Everson areas, and largely because of their proximity to the river, but just saw a massive increase in water over a very short period of time that caused some fairly catastrophic flooding up in that northeast section of the county. Well, Bellingham itself was relatively unimpacted in terms of residences. Uh, we did see a lot of flooding throughout town uh, in areas where drains 
would become clogged and water could not escape and get where it needs to go. So again, the overarching theme of weather here in the Pacific Northwest is that it's mild, that it's uh, accessible, that it's relatively enjoyable for most of the year, but we do get these occasional extremes that will leave you a bit to be desired. Hey, as always, I hope this video has been helpful and informative. If you have any questions about anything that I've shared, any questions about the area, I encourage you to reach out. Again, you can find my information below. And one last time, I encourage you to download that free relocation guide so you can continue to explore Bellingham and determine if it might be the right spot for you. But for now, thank you again for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you again soon.